Another possible clue to the indoctrination theory that I noticed during the conversation with the Catalyst is that when the God Brad finishes explaining each option, Shepard begins to imagine what would happen if he chose those options. What is weird is that what he is imagining is exactly what will happen in those three rainbow endings. Technology you rely on will be affected, but those who survive should have little difficulty repairing the damage. There will still be losses, but no more than what has already been lost. Your corporeal form will be dissolved, but your thoughts and even your memories will continue. You will no longer be organic. Your organic energy, the essence of who and what you are, will be broken down and then dispersed. Shepard does not have the ability to see the future. Therefore, this could be interpreted as Shepard having a hallucination within a hallucination, brought about by the Catalyst trying to convince Shepard into choosing what it wants him to choose. Okay, we now move on to the endings themselves. And the first one I'd like to start on is the new refusal ending. We all know that the refusal ending sucks. It was pretty much a flip of the middle finger to all the fans who wanted to refuse the Catalyst Bolshevik and desire a better ending. What it boils down to is this, you refuse the God Brat's options and you lose. No final struggle, no last stand, no war assets or squad mates fighting to the bitter end in a blaze of glory. Even with the highest DMS and 100% readiness rating, you still lose. Instead, the Reapers are the next cycle's problem, and they somehow win. I would assume that they won by using the Catalyst and being presented with the same three horrible options, which would mean that there was no possible way to refuse the God Rat and win. Thus, Shepard dying for freedom was pointless. Bioware, indoctrinated agents of their own creation, has told us that it is impossible to win conventionally against the Reapers. But isn't Shepard's story all about achieving the impossible? And didn't Javik say that the reason the Protheans lost was because they were not a united galaxy and that they had only one way of fighting and thus they could not think of new strategies to defeat the Reapers? Let's hear Javik's own words just to be sure. How did your people wage war against the Reapers? Attrition. We fought them system by system. Planet by planet, city by city. Entire worlds were sacrificed just to slow the Reapers down. Time they spent harvesting a population was time we could regroup. That must have cost you in the long run. Yes. Our own people would be indoctrinated, converted, then turned against us. But there was no choice. Mercy is not a weapon. It is a weakness. Why do you think your own cycle lost the war? What had been our strength, our empire, became a liability. All races conformed to one doctrine, one strategy. The Reapers exploited this. Once they found our weaknesses, we could not adapt. The subservient races became divided and confused. Then, it was only a matter of time. I'm happy to say our cycle is different. Most races cooperate, but they still remain unique then it may be your only hope. Bioware, you disappoint me. I would rather you had not included this refusal ending, but since you did, you should have focused more on this ending than the other rainbow endings. It would have been epic. Maybe the Leviathan DLC will change that, who knows. But let's move on to what indoctrination theorists call their holy grail of the indoctrination theory. As soon as you give your big refusal speech, or you just outright shoot the God Rat's face in defiance, you see the God Rat reveal its true voice, and thus its true nature. Let's hear it. No. I'm gonna end this war on my terms. Then you will die knowing that you failed to save everything you fought for. I fight for freedom. Mine and everyone's. 
I fight for the right to choose our own fate. And if I die, I'll die knowing that I did everything I could to stop you. And I'll die free. So be it. The cycle continues. This proves that the Catalyst is a Reaper, and it did say earlier that it was the embodiment of all the Reapers. Now, first thing is first, the Catalyst is not Harbinger. For one, he is the one who gave function to all the Reapers and thus controls them all, including Harbinger. Two, the so be it comment is not in Harbinger's voice, it is a more menacing Reaper voice. As I said before, each Reaper has its own clear and distinct voice as evidenced by Sovereign, Harbinger, and the Reaper at Rannoch. Logically, the Reaper Catalyst would have its own clear and distinct voice as well as sound the most menacing of them all. Let's do a comparison of both Godbrat and Harbinger. And because Harbinger is such an awesome villain, let's have a 3 minute montage of his voice, shall we? So be it. You are ignorant. We are knowing. Your allies have fallen, Shepard. You have no one left. You do not yet comprehend your place in things. We are the harbinger of your perfection. And now you stand alone, Shepard. You cannot stop us, Shepard. Shepard, submit now. You cannot stop us. You cannot resist. This is what you face. This is true power. The forces of the universe bend to me. Our power is unmatched. We are your genetic destiny. Nothing stands against us. Face your annihilation. We are your destiny. I am limitless. You are bacteria. We are the harbinger of your ascendance. You have merely delayed the inevitable. You are short-sighted. You cannot stop us. We are the harbinger of your destiny. You will not stop me. We are harbinger. I will direct this personally. Direct intervention is necessary. Your worlds will be our laboratories. You are vermin. We will end you. You cannot stop us, Shepard. You cannot escape your destiny, Shepard. You are arrogant, Shepard. You will learn. Why do you resist us, Shepard? You cannot kill me, Shepard. Shepard, I always survive. Progress cannot be halted. We are unstoppable. Evolution cannot be stopped. They will be as we are. They are vermin. We are the beginning. You are the end. We are superior. You prolong the inevitable. Your death is assured. Embrace perfection. Hope is irrelevant. Your form is fragile. I sense your weakness. I know you feel this. I will show you true power. Sentient beings need never fear pain. I am unstoppable. There is no pain. There is no fear. Pain is an illusion. You have failed. We will find another way. You have only delayed the inevitable. I am Harbinger. I am the harbinger of your perfection. I am the harbinger of your ascendance. We are the beginning. You are the end. You cannot stop us. Human, you've changed nothing. Your species has the attention of those infinitely your greater. That which you know as reapers are your salvation through destruction. You will surrender your potential against the growing void. We return. And you will rise. You cannot stop us. We are the harbinger of your perfection. We will bring your species into harmony with our own. Your species will be raised to a new existence. We are the beginning. You will be the end. Prepare for our domination. Prepare for our coming. Back to my first point. The Catalyst is a Reaper. And thus anything he says to Shepard cannot in any way be trusted. Therefore, Shepard must not choose the rainbow-colored endings, but instead should tell the Godbrat to take its illogical nonsense, get the hell off our planet, and go back to the darkest pit of Hades it crawled out from. 
This is probably the strongest piece of evidence in interpreting the ending as the indoctrination theory. Because the whole point of this theory is that from the London beam to the decision chamber, it is all a hallucination. And the final mental battle against being indoctrinated is the meeting with the catalyst, which is a reaper in disguise, which the indoctrination theorists have been saying all along. Another thing to note is how the catalyst reacts when it says, so be it. Its appearance temporarily shakes in anger. It's the same reaction the catalyst does when Shepard chooses the destroy option before disappearing. Take a look at the comparison. So be it. Whenever the catalyst reacts in this way, it is because Shepard chose the right option according to the indoctrination theory. Therefore, Shepard is breaking away from the catalyst's indoctrination attempt on Shepard's mind. Lastly, let's move on to the extended cut rainbow colored endings. What can I say? They are the most anti-thematic, anti-lore, ridiculously utopian endings I have seen. The control and synthesis endings fail because you play God and make Shepard into a messiah, and allow for the unjustified existence of a billion year old murderous race. Say hello to Darth Shepard, or Space Magic. Welcome to Tim Paradise, or Saren Heaven. If the Reapers have been around for a billion years, then there have been about 20,000 cycles. I don't know the total population of the galaxy, but let's say it's a trillion lives harvested each cycle. This would mean the Reapers have murdered 20 quadrillion lives, or 2 to the 16th power. I don't know about you, but life is precious to me. There is literally no justification at all for the Reapers to exist, not as guardians of the galaxy in the control ending, nor as a library of all the knowledge and cultures it has harvested for the past billion years in the synthesis ending. Destroy ending fails because Shepard arbitrarily decides to end all synthetic life without the consent of those he is sacrificing. That's not true sacrifice. True sacrifice is when one voluntarily decides to put his life on the line for others. Just like Morden, Thane, and Legion. Bioware seems to have forgotten that in the Destroy ending. But enough about how horrible the endings are. Whichever ending you choose, you will see Joker being ordered by Admiral Hackett for all ships to leave the battlefield, and the Soul System entirely in order to escape the Crucible Blast. This fixes the Joker mysteriously flying away plot hole. We then see the entire galaxy with all the mass relays spreading the effects of the Crucible throughout the whole galaxy. However, Bioware still has not fixed the problem as to why the initial blast begins in the Appian Crest and not in the Soul System. I have a video which goes into more detail about this issue. During the Normandy's escape from the Crucible's blast, we no longer see the engines blowing up, yet the ship still lands on the unknown planet. I assume because of internal damages, since there is still smoke seen when Joker opens the door. Finally, we are presented with a picture montage of the decisions we made throughout ME3. It's fine, but the background music is horrible. Only the destroy ending has an adequate background music to it. Also, you either get Shepard in control ending, ED in synthesis ending, or Admiral Hackett in destroy ending, giving a speech of the aftermath. You no longer see the mass relays explode, only the circular spinning parts break away. Thus, the annihilated galaxy plot hole has been fixed. You also find out that both the Citadel and the relays can be fixed, so the stranded fleet plot hole is also fixed. The only other good thing I see about the endings is that they are no longer the same. Each has its own different story, along with the picture montage of all the consequences and benefits resulting from the decisions you made. Finally, we come to the memorial scene of Shepard's death, or supposed death, with the crew putting Shepard's name on the memorial wall, or not, if you chose the destroy ending. However, we do not see a reunion scene in the destroy ending, which is a big con in my book. Bioware tells us to imagine the reunion, because they feel like they can't capture that moment, since everyone's view of the reunion will be different. I highly doubt that, because if they can make a love scene like Liara and Shep, 
a far more intimate moment than a reunion, then why can't they make a reunion scene? Maybe they will do it in a future DLC, but for now, they'll give you the imagine it argument. Lame. The last possible clue to the indoctrination theory that I can think of is that in the control ending, when Shepard begins to speak, he speaks with the Reaper voice overlaid on his own voice. The interesting thing is that the Reaper voice that is used with Shepard's own voice is the God Rat's own voice. As Shepard begins to talk, the Reaper voice starts to fade into the background, and Shepard's own voice starts to become clearer and prominent. Check it out. Eternal. Infinite. Immortal. The man I was used these words. But only now do I truly understand them. This can be interpreted as Shepard becoming indoctrinated and thus coming under the full control of the Catalyst. Therefore, Shepard's own thoughts are not that of his former self, but that of the Reapers. For example, Shepard now seems to believe he understands what eternal means. Really? We already know the Reapers were created, and thus have a beginning. The only thing that can truly understand what eternal really means is one who is eternal itself, i.e. God. Shepard also seems to think he understands what infinite means. Yeah, right. If the Reapers can be destroyed, then they are not infinite. If by infinite they mean knowledge, then they are not infinite because they are not all-knowing. If they were, they wouldn't need to harvest the galaxy for their knowledge. Finally, Shepard seems to think he understands what it means to be immortal. If Reapers were immortal, they would not need to sustain themselves by harvesting all life for their reproduction cycles every 50,000 years. Nor would they be able to die, but we already know they can die. I won't go into Shepard's entire speech. Suffice it to say that Shepard has been indoctrinated into the Reaper's flawed belief that they are eternal, infinite, and immortal, when they are clearly not, and thus Shepard is no longer himself, but a slave to the Reapers. Okay, I know I said that that was the last clue that I could think of, but I just recently found out something so weird which could potentially prove that the scene where Shepard wakes up from Harbinger's beam is the starting point to Shepard's hallucination and thus to the indoctrination attempt on his mind. If we track back to the red hallway where Shepard enters the Citadel, the first new cutscene we see is a Keeper taking off the helmet of a dead soldier, yet we cannot see whose face it is. However, using the fly cam, thanks to our good friend Pretzel, we can now see whose face it is that the Keeper took the helmet off from. Take a look and be amazed at this finding. It seems that Major Coates is dead on the Citadel, yet that is impossible since we already heard him on the radio saying that the entire Hammer Force was wiped out, as this clip shows. We can assume then that what Shepard heard was not real, and that Major Coates did die during the run to the beam. Yet we see Major Coates alive in all three extended cut endings. Even in the synthesis ending, we see Major Coates giving direction and orders during the aftermath. The war is over, and the Reapers are helping to rebuild where once they threatened us with extinction. They now bring us the collective knowledge of the cultures that came before. This can be further proof that what we see in all three endings is nothing more than dreams in Shepard's mind. However, 
One might say that if what Shepard experiences in the Citadel is nothing more than a hallucination, then how does Shepard know that Major Coates is dead? He didn't see him die. Well, I would counter with, why is Major Coates seen dead in the Citadel in the first place and yet is still alive in all three endings? It could be that Shepard's own mind is warning him that what he is experiencing is a hallucination and seeing Major Coates dead among the fallen is a warning sign that what he heard when waking up after Harbinger's blast is just an indoctrination attempt meant to deceive and trap him. Of course, the skeptic in me would say that Major Coates' dead body is nothing more than a reused asset meant to represent any unknown fallen soldier. Or it could be that Bioware screwed up again trying to use a generic dead soldier asset, but mistakenly used Major Coates' body. And honestly, after seeing how Bioware seriously messed up in the original endings and how they tried to correct it in the extended cut DLC, I would not doubt it if Major Coates' dead body was either a mistake on Bioware's part or they were just too lazy to put in a generic dead soldier and went with Major Coates instead and made it so that the players couldn't see his face without using flycam. Whatever the case may be, Bioware's mistake works very nicely with the indoctrination theory, further reinforcing it. So what are we left with? Are these new clues enough to still keep the hope alive for the indoctrination theory to be true? Honestly, I don't know. What I do know is that the extended cut ending DLC was average at best. But do we really want an average ending to an amazingly epic game? I seriously don't. And if Bioware is going to take the route of the indoctrination theory, they must come up with a new ending. They already have a starting point in the refusal ending, but they should tie it in with the destroy ending, since it is in that ending that Shepard survives in the breathing scene. All they need to do is focus their efforts on that and expand on the indoctrination theory through more pre-ending DLCs, such as the Leviathan DLC. Hopefully, Bioware does do this, but if not, then we are left with a disappointingly mediocre ending. Better than the original endings, since it does give us some closure, but not enough to satisfy those who are fans of the Mass Effect lore, and invested so much time in getting to know the amazing characters of Mass Effect. Alright friends and fellow YouTubers, we have reached the end of this video. My goal for this video is for it to be a shining light of hope for the indoctrination theory to still be a valid interpretation of the ending to Mass Effect 3, and for it to be vindicated in future DLC. I would like to give big thanks and congratulations to Bioware for creating such a successful and wonderfully made game series, and an emotionally gripping storytelling game despite Mass Effect 3's disappointing ending. And thank you all for having the patience to watch my entire video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And God bless you all. Goodbye, everybody.